As you may have noticed while I was running the queries on Sky Server, there is a message informing us about the limitations of use. It states that the queries on Sky Server are restricted to how long they can run and how many rows can be returned. If we don't want these restrictions, we'll have to use cast jobs. Cast job allows you to submit queries in batches, meaning that you can submit multiple queries at a time. Moreover, you can also create advanced queries. For example, you can declare new variables based on your own needs or use advanced functions like cross-identification, which has been added specifically for the SDSS context. You can have a look at the specific URLs for more information and examples. Note that SDSS also has a number of very good SQL tutorials, specifically tailored for their database, which I invite you to actually have a look at. If we go to the Cast Jobs website, on the landing page, we can see some background information about what services are offered. In particular, Cast Jobs is an online workbench, a bit similar to what we were using with MySQL. In this case, however, it is entirely online via a web environment. Cast Jobs offer both synchronous and asynchronous queries. Synchronous queries are those that are executed directly, similar to what we did in Sky Server, while asynchronous queries will go to the queue. They represent quick and long queries, respectively. With your account, you will have access to your query history, showing all the information about your previous queries. You can save results into your own database called MyDB. You can share your information with your team, so if you have a large team, everyone can have access to the same data. Finally, an interesting feature enables you to execute queries via the comment line. For example, if you have a terminal open on your machine like this, you could directly send a query to SDSS. And so, uh, in this case here, we're actually going to look at uh, the website, so I'm just going to log in. You need to actually create a username, uh, which is fairly straightforward. Uh, I won't show how to do that, but you can figure that out, I'm sure. So I'm just going to log in here. So once we are logged in, we get to this page where we uh, can actually type in a query. So this is the Query tab. Um, so here you can actually type something and uh, eventually you can uh, submit your jobs to the queue or just run a quick query. Um, we'll get back to all of this. But, uh, before, I'm just going to do a bit of a tour. So, um, so the History tab is related to uh, your previous jobs. And so here are, for example, the jobs that have been running today as uh, tests previously. You have MyDB, which is related to your own database that you've been uh, that you can deal with. So you can actually create your own tables uh, based on your own sub results. And so uh, here I have a few tables that I've been creating. You have the import. So within the import tab, you can actually uh, import some of your own data. So if you have some observational data that you've been creating yourself or within your team that you would like to uh, compare with the SDSS data. You can import it here, um, and so you can import depending on different, uh, or you can decide on what format you're going to use, so either a CSV file, which would be comma separated, or space or tab separated, uh, so that files basically, and um, you can also use VO tables, so virtual observatory format. So in the groups tab, you can actually create your own group uh, and set different properties. Within the output, you can actually uh, look at the tables that you want to export to yourself or uh, to the public. So uh, here you're going to have a bit of information about the pending uh, tables that you're actually processing. So if you're actually saving something that's quite long, it might take a while, so it's going to be in the pending. And once they're ready, they're in the available outputs so that you can download them. And you're also getting some information about the jobs that might have failed. And then finally, uh, in the schema browser, uh, you have access to the documentation, uh, but a bit, it, it's a bit easier to actually reach the information than on the, the actual documentations I find sometimes. Uh, so here, just by clicking and selecting the tables, so for example, here I'm in the data release 13, I'm looking at tables, so you have also views and so on. So here you can select the table and then uh, the information will be loaded here so that you can have a quick access to information. So <clears throat> if I go to the query, 
I could actually just uh, type in our previous query. But here you can see that uh, there are a few things to note. Uh, there's the context, so this is specific to the cast job. So you need to specify which database uh, you want to actually query. So in this case, the tables that we've been looking at earlier were from the data release 13, so I'm just going to select this here. And then you can see where you want to save the results. So here I'm just going to call it, uh, say, uh, Quasar's first match. And then the task name is just going to be the job name if you're submitting it. So it would be the query first match query in this case. You can name it uh, based on your own query, obviously. And something also specific to cast job, if you want to save it into your uh, MyDB, you actually need to say select uh, all of these columns into, then it's going to be MyDB dot uh, the name of the table. So uh, here I'm just going to use the same name that I used here. Let's just put it all in lower caps. Um, and so if I launch this, I can do either quick or submit. Uh, quick would just be uh, running it uh, through here and then you're going to uh, get a message if it's done and if it's ready or if it, everything went well. Uh, in this case, it's a fairly small query that you could run directly on Sky Server, so you could just do the quick, but uh, in this case, just to show, I'm just going to go through the submit button. Uh, and again, you have access to the syntax here, so my syntax is okay. Um, and so I'm just going to submit it to the queue by playing, uh, pressing Submit. And so here uh, we can see a few things that are interesting. So uh, it's a bit like on a supercomputer where uh, the jobs are being uh, put in line, a bit like as if you were waiting in line at the supermarket. Um, and so when uh, the processing is available to run your job, uh, it's going to get started and then uh, it's going to finish at some point as well. And so here now, because it's a very short job, uh, I can see that it started and finished uh, during the same minute. Uh, it took only a few seconds to run. Uh, and now we can see that it completed. If something went wrong, it would be uh, telling you as well, uh, as we could have seen earlier in my history. Um, and so now we have a message saying that the query is complete. So if I go to the history, I should see that uh, this job now has uh, finished. So this is exactly the same thing that we just saw in the other page, uh, along with all the other ones. So as I was saying, uh, if it doesn't go through, you're going to get a failed message. Or if it's actually running, it's also going to tell you. If I go into the MyDB now, um, so now here, uh, we can see the table that I've just created, uh, so Quasar first match. And so if I click on it, and so here, if I want, I can actually download the, the table. So I'm going to do that. I want to get it in comma separated value. Uh, again, you have different formats that you can select from. I'm going to do go. And now here we can see that uh, the generation of this CSV file is pending here. And so uh, eventually it's going to run and then complete. So once it's complete, you can actually download the table. So because I've already done that earlier, uh, we can just download the QSO first common, which is going to be the same table. So the file downloads here. We can see uh, 13 megabytes. Um, so if I open this file, for example, here I'm opening it in TextMate. Now we have our results on our personal computer uh, so that you could then use it in, from your code, for example.